What's up guys, in today's video, I'm gonna show you our brand new material works update for 2025. And basically what this tool allows you to do is completely texture and add details to your model in a matter of clicks. And this new update that we're releasing today is gonna to allow you to basically add in decals and trim sheets without the use of decal machine. I'll put some footage on the screen here. You can check that out. So I'm gonna show you how this whole entire tool works. This is three years in the making, so if you want to pick this up, you can do so in the link in the description for 50% off. That will be ending tonight. So let's go into Blender and let me show you how this entire tool actually works. All right, so we're going to hop into Blender and once you have Material Works installed, and obviously once you buy it, there's going to be a full tutorial showing you how to install it. But we're going to go into Cycles mode here. I would recommend GPU Compute. It's going to be quicker, generally. And I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the first and one of my favorite features. If I click on this HDRI button, this will add in realistic studio lighting. These are packs from a very popular hard surface designer named Alex Senechal. You may have heard of him. We got permission to use some of his studio lights as part of the add-on. So there's gonna be six of the most realistic lights you can find for Blender basically. So. Let's go ahead and just use the default one. My favorite is this gun gradient. And then I'm going to add in one of our hard surface materials here. So as you can see, right when I add that in, in this case, this carbon fiber texture, we have the really nice and clean lighting here in Blender. And we also have a bunch of new features that I'm about to show you right here. So the first one is this bevel feature. If I click on this button for bevel, it's gonna add a very small and procedural bevel here on the edges. And I can actually go in here, increase the resolution, and I can also maybe increase the width to something higher. And you can kind of see that I have full control over this procedural bevel, and I don't need to use a physical bevel with this tool, okay? So that's kind of the first uh, two features, the HDRI and the bevel, very basic and uh, very simple as well. And like I said, you can go in here and swap to all sorts of different HDRIs and kind of find the one that you prefer the most. So again, there are 50 hard surface textures in here. These were made by a pro substance designer. So they were using substance to make these. So these are basically things you'd find in real life. So you have like carbon fiber, cables, aluminum, metals, like all sorts of different materials that you can just click a button and add them directly to your model. I'll even put some, you know, renders on the screen right now so you can kind of see how you can make your work look by using this tool. Now I want to show you a brand new feature that we just released. This is one of my favorites here. So I'm going to go to maybe aluminum, for example, I'll add a bevel. And we have a feature here called wear and tear. If I click on this button, it's going to add wear and tear to our model. So you can add dust, fingerprints, grunge, all sorts of stuff. Now let me just go in here and kind of show you some of the different ones. You can obviously check this on your own. But let's say I wanted to use rust. I could go over here to rust, click on that button. And now I have rust applied to the model. And we actually have a few different variations here. So I could go to variation B, for example, and this will give us a different style of rust on the model. I could go to variation C. It's going to give us a new one as well. And as you can see, I have full control over this rust and I can also adjust the strength. So it's, you know, a lot lighter, maybe not as heavy. And you also have other settings in here like scale, rotate. If you want to play with that, I uh, just leave those alone on the defaults. But you can go in here and literally adjust how heavy the, uh, the strength value is. And you have a bunch of different, you know, options in here. Now we also have other stuff. For example, if I go here to maybe smudge, you're going to have stuff like fingerprints in here. So I could go to, for example, I could go here to maybe variation B. And we have this really clean texture here on the model as well. And like I said, you can adjust the strength kind of figure out, you know, how much you want that. And we have other stuff like, for example, um, let's go to dust maybe. So you can add in all sorts of different dust variations and kind of, you know, make your model look more dusty. And you can kind of adjust the strength here as well. Now let me show you a new tool as well. So let's say maybe I'll add in like a larger, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a slightly larger bevel here doesn't really matter that much. 
and let's say I wanted to just have edgeware attached to the hard edges only. So I could actually go in here, I could go over to the edgeware tool and if I click on this button right here for edge, this will constrain the effect specifically on the edges of the model. Now I can obviously increase the strength here to about that size. I can also go in here and increase the width so it kind of spans out further. I can increase the samples to make the resolution higher if I want to do that. And you can kind of see that it's basically expanding the edgeware from the edges basically. I can go in, adjust the width, obviously adjust the strength. You can make that very light if you want to. And like I said before, you have different variations of the edgeware. So I could go to this one, for example, same idea. I could increase the strength, I can increase the width, and you can kind of figure out you know, what style you prefer. Now there's a bunch of different ones in here. I won't go through all of them, but you have a bunch of different things like dense, dust, particles, all sorts of different ones that you can use on your model. Now you can also stack these to so say, for example, I wanted some edge wear and damage and I wanted to add, you know, you know, stack the effect. Basically I could go to wear layer. This will add in a new one. So maybe I want to go to, I don't know, smudge. So now I have these smudges right here and this one, I'm not going to attach to edge. I'm going to keep that turned off. So it's affecting the entire model. And obviously I can go in here and kind of adjust the size and you're going to see it basically stacks the effects here. So I can obviously increase the width. So now not only do I have the edge where I also have, you know, a stacked effect. So I can kind of play with that and I can stack basically as many wear layers as I want. Um, usually you won't be using more than like three or four, but you can go in here and just add in multiple layers of edge wear and damage. So as you can see right here, I have, you know, this edge wear right here. I also have the smudges and I also have the edge wear on the edges here. So you can kind of stack these effects directly on your material. And this works for any of these textures here. I just use the aluminum as an example, but you can do these for literally any of the different effects here. Now, some of these materials actually have different customizations. So for example, here, this particular one actually has a mission. So I could go in here and actually add a little bit of a mission to this area. And I could also go to, for example, let's go to um, it's a much better example I want to show you here. Let me find it. Actually, it's right here. I could actually go to the alpha value and maybe turn off the emission and I could actually add holes on this object. So it actually goes through. So for example, let's say I had a curve. Maybe I'll go to curve, Bezier, and then just rotate that 90 degrees and then just adjust the curve there. I could actually, for example, add in this right here. Now, since this is a curve, I just need to press control A, apply this to a mesh, and then I can actually go in here. And as you can see, I have a completely transparent effect on this pipe. Now, you're gonna notice a little bit of an issue right here. Notice how these holes are kind of overlapping. This brings me into the UV mode, all right? Now, the reason this is occurring is because with procedural, um, you know, blends here, it's just going to happen naturally. So you can kind of see what's going on with the blending. It's just kind of getting this weird effect right here. This is a good example of where you could switch over to UV mode. So I could actually go in, switch this to UV mode, maybe add in a seam down here. So right click, mark seam, and then just go ahead and unwrap that. So now we're kind of putting the seam here on the bottom where we can't see it. And now I can kind of go in here and have a much cleaner result. And maybe I want to go in and adjust the scale as well. I can go here to the transform feature and literally just increase the scale. And if you want to override that, you could do like four as an example. And now I have this really clean, you know, pipe, whatever you want to call it, that has this transparent effect right on the model. So imagine, you know, designing this like physically modeling that in, it would be annoying. So you don't want to do that. In this case, you can just go in here and use one of our textures to get a result like this. Like I said, you can also add like a mission. I don't really use this one too much if I'm honest, but you can kind of go in here and uh, like change the color and stuff like that. I personally don't think the emission really looks good on models in general. I personally don't use that, but you do have that available to you. I believe it's also on some of these other ones here, like this hex. 
you can kind of go in and add in like, you know, different effects kind of like that, which I think is pretty cool. Now, this brings me to our brand new update that was literally released um, as I'm recording this video. It was just released, and this is why we're running a relaunch. You can pick up this tool for 50% off, but after this launch period, the price is going up specifically due to this feature right here. Now, beforehand, you had to buy an add-on called Decal Machine. That's a $55 add-on. And then you also needed to get decals and trim sheets. And the only ones that are really available on the market, we had to make. It took us hundreds and hundreds of hours to make these. And it's generally not worth your time to make. But now, with this new Material Works update, you have all of our decals and all of our trim sheets built directly into the plugin and you do not need decal machine anymore. So check this out. I'm going to go to the D key and then I can just choose any of these decals. You do not have to buy these separately. This comes with this updated tool, which is why I'd really recommend getting in on this 50% discount we have going right now that is linked below. Um, so we can go ahead and, and for example, I could just choose one of our decals here and boom, and it actually inherits the texture as well, which is really, really neat. Let me show you a different example, maybe on a, on a sphere. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna add in a sphere. I'm going to add in maybe the aluminum. I just like this material a lot. And then I can just go in, I can drop in literally any of these decals, but if I kind of go into the side view, it's not really on top of the mesh. So what we can actually do is we can go to the D key and there's gonna be an option here a few different options actually, but this one right here is going to shrink wrap the decal onto the model. You can also go in here and adjust it so you can kind of move it up or down. You don't really need to though, uh, but you're going to see that it's shrink wrapped directly onto the model and it looks like, you know, real geometry. So you can do this for literally any type of decal you want. We have a ton in here. There's over 800 that you can use. And this is just gonna make the detailing process a heck of a lot easier inside a blender. And you don't really have to do, you know, any sort of manual modeling. Now, one thing I did forget to mention is this uh, blend feature. This is a good time to show you. Now, by default, this button right here is the procedural mode, and this is the UV mode. I already showed you this on that pipe example, but you're gonna see we have a slider right here. If I put this to zero, Notice we have these very obvious seams on the model. See that? What this blend mode does is it remove the seams. It removes them completely. Now the default setting I use is 0.2, but essentially what this does is it just blends the detail together. So now it kind of looks brushed over. You can't see the seam anymore. Very, very useful tool inside of Material Works. Now that you see, you know, how the decals work, and again, we don't just have, you know, basic decals. We also have some really cool ones, which are called info decals, which are basically text. You can go in here, you can add those in. We've also added in reuse massive Japanese decal pack. These were literally taken in Japan, by the way, like real life. And you can actually get full access to this pack inside of Material Works as well. Super, super cool decals that you can add directly on top of your 3D model, just like that. Super simple. Now I need to show you our trim sheet library. We've installed every single one of our trim sheets directly into Material Works as well. So we're gonna go ahead and go into edit mode. Now the difference between decals and trims is trim sheets run on the UVs, on the geometry. So for example, if I go in here and I maybe add in a loop cut, what I can actually do here, maybe I'll um, go in, I can press the D key and then I can choose from any of these trim sheets right here. So I could click on that button and you're going to see, I can just kind of scroll through here. If I hold a control, I can kind of scroll through the different ones and I have our trim sheets running directly on the geometry as you can see right here. And it also inherits the textures as well. This also works with bevels. So for example, maybe I'll, um, let me just add in a new new cube here. I can even do this with a different material just to like really emphasize this effect. Maybe I'll add in a bevel right here, right? Then I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna add in a trim sheet right here. Same idea, I can just go in, can choose any of these trim sheets. 
This is a textured trim sheet. Now we actually have a few ones that are pre-textured with the letter T. If you don't want to use those, if it doesn't make sense, you can use, um, I'm sorry, the textured ones are QM for Quixel Mixer. That's where we made them. But if you don't want a textured one, you can just use the regular ones as well and kind of scroll through the different ones, see what you like. And as you can see, it inherits the actual texture and you don't have to do any sort of modeling. You can just add these details right to your model in a matter of seconds, just like that. I mean, look at that. It's seamless. So again, the new trim sheet system is very powerful. It's super easy to use. You just go in here, you run the trims right on the geometry. You can use any of these. There are a bunch of different details. You can just kind of cycle through them. And then you just hold control and you can kind of, you know, see which ones you like, see which ones you don't like. And then once you find one that you think looks good, I mean, just look at that. It runs right on top of the geometry. Very, very simple. Now, this isn't really that big of a deal, but I'll go ahead and show you one more feature that we decided to add in. You might not even use it, but I'll show you anyways. So whenever you're adding in decals, there's gonna be like a, a default size. So if I press the D key, the default size is 0.5. If I change this to maybe 0.25, that will make every single decal at half the size. So you can kind of set like a preset of different decal sizes. So if you don't want them all to be, you know, different sizes or whatever, you can actually manually choose the size and also the offset, but I would keep that set to the default as well. And every single time I add in a new decal, it's gonna be that size that we set. If I change this to 0.5, maybe even one, now the decals are gonna be a heck of a lot larger and you can kind of set those presets in there as well. Like I said, you can also shrink wrap it right on top of the model. So I'm gonna cycle through some different renders and some different images. You can kind of see how this feature, how this tool can actually make your models look in a matter of seconds. And that's not an exaggeration because I just showed you. You click a button and this is all done for you. So guys, if you wanna pick up this tool, you can go to the link in the top of the description or in the pinned comment. It is 50% off right now. That is closing tonight. And um, yeah, if you wanna pick this up, I'd really recommend getting that tonight because we're gonna be uh, ending that sale very, very soon. Simply due to this new system, this was very expensive to make. It took about eight months to get the decal system made, but it's finally here and you can pick it up for a very cheap price right now. Again, linked in the top of the description. So that's Material Works. Head over to the sales page in the description below. There's a lot more information over there so you can kind of see you know, deeper into what it does. And if you want to pick it up, obviously you can do that over there as well. So again, linked in the top of the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.